This ain't rocket science. Pour me up, Number man. Episode 11. All right, my man. Appreciate that. Gotta show love, man. Episode 11, this ain't rocket science, people. We in here. Nope. We got a good day. What we gonna talk on? We gonna touch on topics such as entrepreneurship. We gonna talk to human aliens himself. Yeah, he's, he's definitely in the building. The human alien. The human alien himself. He's also, listen, stay tuned. We're gonna give away three free t-shirts. I'll be checking his mentions. I'll be checking his comments on Instagram. People love his work. They do. So stay tuned, listen. I'm actually got this. We're gonna give away three three free shirts. That's the motocross, yeah. So that's the old throwback. Old school. What else we got going on though? Where's my drink, nigga? That's what, that's what we got going on. This drink you paid for. Thank you, I appreciate you, sir. At least I can do. We also gonna touch on such topics like we're gonna touch on some black China. Black China fucking around helping with the weight. Score game on the like me, I appreciate it. We're gonna touch on uh Mother's Day recap also. See what Mano did for his mom. What'd you do for your mom? So the happy Mother's Day, man. Just like I told y'all what last episode. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I feel that. She appreciate man. it. I feel that. But uh yeah, man, episode eleven. Same rocket science, you ready? Mm -hmm. Right back, right back. Alright, uh, that was Uzi. You got the freestyle in this joint? I was Listen, about to. I thought I was catching up. I don't give Ooh, a fuck about you. Bitches sucking dick. All I want is get some money, cause a nigga found them bricks. Oh, cash, get cash, don't say that, don't say that. Work that pole, work that pole. Uh, the elections working a pole. <laughs> Yeah. All right, that's that's for another. That's the boot. That's the boot. Yeah, the boot condition. We're about to get real in here for a second. All right, that was Uzi, Scott, and Ramona. All right, all right. All right so we're right back. Let me ask you this: So, Steph Curry, man, how y'all feel about the chef, man? Back to back MVPs. Back -to -back. All right. All right. We're the game, and for those that didn't see it, my man took over the last. What he scored? Seventeen and nineteen in the last points. Whatever the fuck it was. All right. So basically, uh, I mean, Golden State was up what? 2-1 in the series. Was it 2-1? 2-1. Steph Curry been out the last three weeks. They were up 2-1, so that put him up 3-1. He's been out the last two weeks. He was out four games, came back, and I thought he would be a little slow with it. Like, he wouldn't turn up like he did. All right, so so for people who don't know, with Steph Curry, who, as I, as before mentioned, was back-to-back -back MVPs this year, he got hurt in the first round of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. All right, so people have been questioning when should he come back or if he should come back at all. All right, but they were up 2-1 going into this game. And he came off the bench for the first time in, I want to say, three years. Mm. All right, because it was a game that they, they really needed. It's it the playoffs. Mm. You feel me? So so they brought him off the bench. He had a, a minute restriction. He was only supposed to play 25 minutes. That didn't, that didn't happen. But actually, you know, the Warriors needed him more than 25 minutes. So as you mentioned, he, he scored... A league record, 17 points 17 in overtime. overtime. Like, now, mind you people, overtime is only five minutes. <laughs> right. So let me ask you He's back-to-back -back MVPs. This year, they had the best record in league history, 73-9. and nine. How do you feel about him? Like, how, I, I have a question, a free question. Okay, okay. all right. Back-to-back -back MVPs. What you really think about this, do you... Did he 100% deserve MVP last year? It's crazy you mentioned that. Now, was he better than LeBron James last year? Now, like I said, let me let me just say this. It's funny you mentioned that because one, th one thing about my man Phil, Phil runs his own race. He's his own man. And I said it to say, he's not an iPhone user, so he's not in our group chat. Right. All right? He, can, he, he don't give two fucks about a, about a phone, period. Yes. All right? So, in the chat today, we spoke about, now, Steph Curry... In the literal term, and valuable player, most That's right. valuable player, because it's about value. The, the right. word value is in it. Okay, right. so so in the NBA, it's called MVP, most right. valuable player. Mm -hmm. right. All I said in the chat today was, and I was attacked. All I said in the chat today was, most valuable player would be LeBron James. If we're talking strictly value, value. Well, you talking about the year before? You talking about just in general? Talk, I'm talking, talking about, about this year. Well, this year this specifically. Oh uh, well, I can't. This year, about. this year, most valuable player is LeBron James. Now, I understand the MVP in the NBA is it's pretty much most outstanding player. Right. So if you want to give to Steph Curry, I'm fine with that. But, but wait, if you want is to talk it true value, that Steph Curry has also most improved player? No, no, no. I, 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 not no, true. no, no, no. I would not give him. Year. Not this year. Either. Listen, I would have okay. given him most improved last year. And I will give him most improved this year. He should have got, got most improved. improved this year. Nah, if he got if he got nah, most nah. improved this year, it's it's well deserved. He did. He Look didn't that up. No, how's it well deserved? He got MVP. No, 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 no. no, no. Still got most improved this year, I think. The the other guard from Portland, not um, 
Lillard. Not Dame Lillard, but McCollister, whatever his name is, number three. McCollum. 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 Yeah, oh, McCollum. Okay, CJ McCollum. I think, think McCollum Which, won which won is well deserved. Yeah, man, the great thing about Steph is about being back to back MVP is he was MVP last year. Mm-hmm. He increased his scoring average about six and a half points I per game. He was MVP last year. That's what I'm saying. Like LeBron James MVP last year. Okay, well, my thing is LeBron James could be, if you, if you want to talk value, he's I'm really feel like every year. Right, if you exactly. lift LeBron, all right, so Steph Curry sat out four games, right? And how many did they win? They won, did they win two of those games? Shit, they won all, if he sat out four games, they won three. So they won three, no, because he played last night. So he sat out four games. He sat out four games. Okay, yeah. so he, the game that he got hurt, they won. They were against Houston, right? And they lost and one yeah, game they closed that season, so far. Yeah. Right. So, right. regardless, if you take, if you lift LeBron James off of the Cleveland Cavaliers and just take him somewhere, Cleveland ain't winning a damn series. Like they not, they might not win a game. They going to get swept. Yeah, whatever. If Steph Curry is removed, the Golden State Warriors are going. They're going to win some games. They, they, they've done it. Yeah, they won two without him. Yeah, that, that that he's they're already there. But I'm talking about from the beginning of the season. Are they going somewhere? I think they, I think they will make the playoffs. No, I think the West. I think in the West they can still make the playoffs. Yeah. And I put it like this: if you take them off that team, I think they would beat the Rockets, and I think it could be Portland, right, right, without Steph Curry at all. But if you take LeBron off, off the Cleveland Cavaliers, they're not even. They wouldn't have made it out the first. Listen, round. you take LeBron off the Cavaliers, they don't even have the roster they have. No. I said last year he should have been executive of the year, not only <laughs> he could have been executive of the year. Yeah, sure. you, you understand what I'm saying? Sure. So if you want to talk about value. I kind of feel like LeBron will be every year. But and, and you brought up a good point in the chat that they should rename it like most outstanding player and MVP. Because like you said, when you talk about value, to me LeBron James has a, like his value to that team. If you lift him off that team, they not even they're not going to do anything. There's no such thing as LeBron James not going to the finals. That's yet to be seen this year, but there's no such thing seen LeBron, in the last like six. There's years. no such thing as LeBron James not going to the finals. There's no such thing. Right, right, right. So he went to a team who wasn't even making the playoffs. It took to the finals last year. So if you want to talk about value, come on, man. That, that's all I need. Mean. But like, but for, for Steph Curry to show up, and score forty points, that was the greatest performance I've seen since Michael Jordan. I kind of wish I could say that. <laughs> the only reason I can't say that is because I went to bed. I made a business decision. I hear you. You should have stayed up. And that, and it, and no, I should have. Nah, I should have. No, you should have. That was when I say I've never seen a player take over that game since Michael Jordan. And I can't even remember the game that Michael Jordan. Uh, no, I can't tell you. You can't believe boy AI. AI takes over the game all the time. Okay. You've seen hey, that. Hold on. AI is my favorite basketball player. You've of all seen time. him take over games. He is. He, and he has. But I have never seen a player. Physically Listen, wrap his hand around the I game don't know about and that. say, "Guys, uh, I'll win this for us." Uh, so Since for Michael Jordan, AI, AI took one of the wor- first of all. I give this should be two trophies for AI and LeBron James for taking two of the worst teams ever in history of basketball to the championship. True to the finals. True. And it, AI, if I'm not mis- mistaken, scored at least 50, 50 points at least one time against the Lakers. Was it? Am nah, I, am I, am I taking it? Yeah, yeah, forty. Yeah, 40. Okay, forty, 40 points the against the late no against the Lakers. The Lakers. Yeah. You want to talk about someone taking? At least they won one game in the finals. They won one. Yeah, I, I feel that. <laughs> But I'm talking about as far so as... So you haven't seen that since AI. I'll, I'll give you that. No, no, no. I haven't seen that since Jordan. Since, like Michael uh, Jeffrey since, Jordan. Since Allen. My man, listen. So you see, I, I, yeah, I, I, I Michael seen. Jordan. Uh, I, I didn't want to get into this. Michael Jordan. I didn't want to get into this. This would be a long debate. I it agree with Bill, but you haven't seen this since Michael Jordan. Since Allen Michael Jordan, bro. Allen Iverson. So who's better? Steph Curry Allen Iverson? Allen Iverson. I agree. Okay, yeah, you go for this. I'm going to tell you this, all right? We're not going to stay at this point all night. If you want to say Allen Iverson, if you want to say at their equal points in their careers, first six, seven years, you can say Allen Iverson had the best career. But what I would say to you two guys right now is Allen Iverson in his life has never been as good as Curry has been the last two years. Uh, it's, it's debatable, but you know, I don't understand what that means. But okay, okay, I'll, okay. I'll explain. You know that, excuse me, I'll explain to you what that means. Okay, now do, do you want to get into this? We can get in. He's never shot a higher percentage. Okay. All right. Watch this. Watch this. Or Go been ahead. more efficient than Steph Curry has been. He's never been as good as Steph Curry has been in the last two years. Oh, Keep going. You can put your hat on back. I'm done. That's all, all right. I have to say. Let me tell you something about Allen Iverson. Okay. Okay. This is my last one before you get started. I'm an Allen Iverson fan. I'm a Sixers fan. Okay. All right. Okay. You okay. don't sound like. It. But I'm, I'm being I'm being real right now. All right. 75 percent of the love that you have Allen Iverson comes from off the court things. 
be the fashion of where we're supposed to be. You guys point. Let me say this. Let me say this. But let me reiterate. I don't know everything in his life has never been as good as the Curious today. All right. Now watch this. We're talking about 50, 40, 90 yeah. clubs. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Allen Iverson. Okay. This is well documented. Phenomenal player he is. He was hated by the NBA. Okay. He was hated by the refs. Yeah, you know this. No, 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 it's not conspiracy. Right. They, it's not a conspiracy. They, they it's conspiracy. What's the guy? Tim, what's his name? Tim what? The, the, uh, the, the referee. Donahue. Tim Donahue. Donahue. Admitted that he would bet. He would win 80 or 70% of the time. He would bet that a game's against Allen Iverson. He knew that they were going to lose because they were going to call the game against him. There's film. There's footage. You can Google this right now. There's film and there's footage you can YouTube. of him being... He was called a, a technical foul. What was the foul for? Bringing the crowd down. He said, what is that? Technical foul. You're bringing the crowd down. He wasn't even allowed to play. Anything he did was a foul. Anything he did, if, if he was fouled, it wasn't a foul. If he, no. moved, foul if he me. moved, if he moved, <laughs> it was a foul. He was playing with a handicap. You ever play handicap video games before? You ever play like, like Mortal Kombat and handicap? He was playing with a handicap. They did not let him play. You can watch this. They did not let him play. He's sitting there playing with something that Steph, Steph Curry has the freedom to do whatever he wants. He's the most beloved yeah. player. Yeah. They, 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 they hated him. They didn't let him play. And he still prevailed. So don't tell me anything about AI. All right, all right, so, all right, so, are you finished? I'm done. All right, that's episode 11, people. <laughs> this ain't rocket science. <laughs> now let me just go ahead and say again, we're giving away three free t-shirts, three different people. Death Anime 1, 2, and 3. All right, and the way to win these t-shirts is follow the page. He has to look it up. <laughs> it's a fresh page. <laughs> it's a fresh page. New, Tars new Podcast. Alert. This ain't Rocket Science. New page alert. This ain't Rocket Science Podcast, all right? Follow the page, like the pics, and DM us the answer to, to the question. What was the question? What was Human Aliens' teacher's name of his first entrepreneur experience? Mm-hmm. All right? I definitely said it. I definitely said it earlier. All right, man. That's it. This ain't Rocket Science, episode 11. Yo. Cut it up and cut it out. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right so, like, I, I, me personally, I look up to human aliens as a brand, you know what I mean? They, uh, <laughs> yeah, no problem, man. <laughs> oh, you just gonna roll? You gonna roll like the, you did the last one, correct? Nah, I look up to human aliens as a brand, man, because it's, uh, it's, it's very fashion, fashion forward. Thank you, man. Yeah, Thank no, you. No problem, man. Thank no problem. you. I mean, you supply them with me with the shirt I got on, on my back right now. That's right. You know That's right. I mean? There's more coming, so I got the black one coming on the way. For real. Let's see. Yeah, we all got to break it. Yeah, that's right. We all got the black one no, coming. Yeah, neither of y'all got it, but are it's all breaking news right now? Yeah, they were. There's new ones. There's new ones coming. Damn. Damn. Yeah, you can't blame Bill, and, but and I was and there. And the sad part about it is none of the people in here I, I told besides this guy, he was there. He missed his payment. I think I might have texted you. You didn't text I me didn't, shit. You didn't go to this me. I didn't miss my payment. You missed your payment. I just felt like I had more time. And just let everybody know, I didn't charge my friends. They just paid the cost to make. Just letting y'all know that. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, so, all right. Mr. Human Aliens himself, man. We He's gracious. Why well, thank you, Phil? <laughs> thank you, Phil. I made no money off of you. So, <laughs> so, basically, what it, what inspires you as a as a designer, as a as a person that creates a lot? What what inspires you, man? I don't know. I, 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 I yourself? I don't know. <laughs> I, that's yourself? a good question. I mean, I. What inspires you? I, that's it. I don't know. Like, don't, what, how do you get in the creative know. process? Like, is it so natural that you, you don't even no, no, I, inspiration? I, it's kind of corny to say, but it's like just everyday things. Like, it's just life. I, yeah, it's just okay. life. Um, I have another Instagram account called Wild Cruel, and that's like I put all the fashion inspiration on that on that um Instagram. Okay. And I don't really care if anybody follows it or not. It's really for me as a reference to go back. Right. But it's like you know whatever brands that are on that Wild Cruel uh, Instagram is the kind of the fashion that inspires me. Of course, anime. I don't know, any. That's a hard question. So Everything you, inspires me. You speak on anime. Like, how big of an influence is that into the actual brand? Because, like, I think people, especially people we went to like school with and all, all that, they see you, you do anime and like mm-hmm. see you, you tweak different images and all that, and look at anime and they might not be into it, but they're into your clothes. How big of an influence is anime, and where does it fit in the whole human alien scale? The thing about it, people always like DM me or, or email me like. If you watch this anime, you watch this. Th- I, the truth is, I don't watch anime. Mm-hmm. That's that's not the, that's not really what I meant. I don't watch anime. Only anime I really watched was Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, and um, and um, 
Sailor Moon. Okay. But I'm more in it for the artwork. I, I so it's not movie. necessarily, I don't necessarily, I watch anime for the artwork. I'll turn anime on it and put it on mute. It's not, I don't really watch it. So I love the artwork because I'm an artist as well. So it's just the art itself of plays a role. It's, it's the art, it's the look of it that plays the role. But anime itself doesn't play a role in my like life. Right. Like, I don't even get some of these anime references they do on like Vine. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> And people like, and people tag me like, right, human aliens? I'm like, nah, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. I got you, I got you. So, how did you end up in getting into uh, like design? Well, first design. I've touched on that. How did you get into like designing things and, and clothes? Design. Well, graduate from Delaware State. Okay. Or what? What a work. What a worth this degree. Or it's worth it. Burn it. Had no, I did burn it. I actually did burn it. My mom. Did? My mom. I think we should all burn it. She our made degrees. me order another one. She was like, why did you burn it? But um. Graduated and had no job and had no money, wasn't used to that. Right. So I was like, I'm about to take my talents in my own hands. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. So um, I started emailing. This is back when the blog, blogging wasn't that popular. I started emailing like Jeffrey Campbell, Karma Loop, Nasty Gal. I was like, yo, I'll do free artwork for y'all if, if like, you know, and, and just post it on your blog. They all, nobody said no. They all said yeah. Right. And eventually it turned to like a paid job. Then people pay me for their, for their artwork. I mean, pay me for artwork for the blog. And then when it came to, um, with Jeffrey Campbell, I did some artwork, some shoe designs. And next thing you know, they were actually making the shoe designs. And next thing you know, the shoe designs were in store. I literally woke up one day and looked online and the shoes that I made we're in stores. So like how like how was that feeling? Like you wake up like you just I mean you're crazy. You from West Village, correct? Yeah. So you went to Delaware West, State. West West, yo. How did how did that feel <laughs> coming up? Like just waking up and bam. That was crazy. I was I I remember where I was. I woke up and I woke up, got on the computer, and I and I looked and I know they mentioned something about making the shoes. I was like, you know, but I never really nothing was like signed or anything. Right, right, right. So that's another story. But um, <laughs> I woke up and like my shoes with the exact same colorway, the exact same design, mm -hmm. the exact same name of the shoes that I named them right. was on Karma Loop's website. And I started Googling, they, was, they were on like Soul Struck, they were everywhere. So let me ask you this, did you receive credit for that? I received credit for it. Basically what they claimed was that there was a mishap. The person who I was working with ended up getting fired. And then they never contacted. But as soon as I contacted them, they they, they worked everything out. They, so they, were you compensated for this? Oh, I was compensated. Oh, so, so it was a win. So it was you a win. Up and you seen that they it was a win. Stole and it began, and it began, I was mad. I didn't want to say that. I was like, yo, who stole my design? But then it, and it was a win. I got paid. So like, how often do you, do like people? Is that a, like a common thing? Do people steal your designs often? Like it happens all the time. People steal stuff all the time. But at the same time, there's, there's a difference. There's there's borrowing for inspiration, mm -hmm. and then there's just straight up stealing. Mm -hmm. The people who straight up steal, which happens all the time, there's not really much you could do. The people who straight up steal, I have no respect for them. But but at the same time, people think that because something might be inspired by what you did, it's stealing, mm -hmm. but in fact, it's not. Right, inspiration is inspiration. Right, because if, if you took my idea and you made it something different, I can't, that's the same thing I do. Mm -hmm. I look at Jeremy Scott, I look at what he did, and I'll switch it up and do Right, I can't be upset. Right. So, um, people do it. People take my idea all the time. All right. So let me ask you this. So, as a freelance designer, so how do you secure the bag? I mean, so if somebody right. hires you, or what, what do you do to make sure you basically don't get jacked? Well, I mean, the the best thing you could do, and this is this is for like the future of anybody out there who's like a um, a designer, freelance designer. Uh -huh. One thing you need to know is that once they see your design, they've seen it. Okay, so let's say that someone says, yo, I'm going to pay you X amount of dollars so you can design our, our t-shirt line, right? Mm -hmm. And let's say that they say that we're going to pay you X amount of dollars for each one that we're going to use, right? right. But you submit it, because what happens, you have to submit like 70 or, or 100 designs. This is a real thing. I, I'll sit and I'll have to design. I've been there when you got gotten phone calls about, yeah. Yeah, I've got to design 70 things or 100 designs. Yeah. The problem is with a lot of freelance designers is that the company that they're designing for, they'll say, oh, we're going to use this eight out of the 70 you did. Yeah. And you're like, wait a minute. Like, I just spent time doing 70 designs and you're only going to take eight? So, like, how, how long does an uh, individual design take? Does it, like, vary? Well, it depends. I, I have a method where things kind of... I can, I can finish 70 designs in two days. Okay. But, but the thing about it is 
the, but that's not the worst part. The worst part is, let's say they accept eight of your seventy designs, but right? But use something that you. But it happens they saw the other ones, so, so they might them. exactly, and they can influence them. So they might not. They next thing you know, like, you know, they might take the zipper from that, or the pocket from that, or the hood from that. Right. You still inspired that. Right. So this is my question. So. What are steps that future people can take that right. can stop that? So should they just get their money for all 70 yeah. designs? Or yes. they... So this is what you should do. You should always secure your money up front. Here. If they want to work with you, that's because they know that you do a good job. Mm -hmm. So it's either they want to work with you or they don't. Right. Either they looked at your, your past work and they say, this guy or this girl is going to do some good work for us. The best thing you could do is say, listen, I need this amount of money up front for sure. Right? Whatever right. amount of money that is. Then you can say whatever ones that you do use, you can give me an additional amount or a percentage. But you want to make sure that for all 70 designs that you submitted, you're, well you're getting paid for all. And that doesn't mean you're getting paid the max amount of money, but you're getting paid for that time for and for what, you, and what you've done. Securing the bag. Right. You gotta secure the bag for you. It's crucial. Because they will steal your <laughs> shit. <laughs> they will steal <laughs> They will. I believe you, man. I mean, when you look at the fashion industry, a lot of it's all about influence and, and, and people's not stealing. Like, in, to me, influence is a softer word for stealing. But, but, mm -hmm. but being, I don't, I don't agree. I, if, but if you're influenced by something, I can literally see something. It influenced me, but it creates something whole, totally different. True. I'm, I, you know what I'm saying? Maybe stealing is a harsh word because no. it sounds so negative. Influence, I think, is, is the word that's the problem. That's the word. Cause stealing is stealing. Like, it's one thing to see <laughs> this hat and say, God damn it, I'm going to do the same thing with pitch. Right. C O B H you know, in the morning. People straight steal. No, people straight steal my designs. I mean, we've I've seen it on Instagram. Like, yeah, we've, you, you, we've right. seen that. People so, straight up steal. I, and I've seen it too. I mean, I, we ain't gonna name. I mean, are we going to name some people? Y'all yeah. can name the names, but I ain't gonna name them. Right, Let right, me ask you this though. Pass that. Speaking of, well, not even speaking of stealing designs. Let's put it, inspire people. What people from the industry that people might know out that you? We're not gonna say they stole your designs, but that, that you've inspired. What people have reached out to you and said they, they like your designs? Listen, man. Who from, <laughs> can you name any people from the industry? Listen, I'm not gonna name anybody. All right, let's put it like this. Who have you worked with in the industry? The people right, right there you go. Right, we're, name, we're, not, name some, we're not gonna say right, the story. Name some artists okay. that, that have came that have came yeah, well, to you and say, "Hey, we like your work. Can is it possible we can wear a piece or two? Not only as we like it or can we wear it, but they complimented your work. Who right. who in the industry has complimented you on your work? Right. Listen, I'm I'm just gonna give out one. I'm gonna shout out to my boy Swiss Beats. Swiss Beats. Swiss Beats straight up, and you, you, you was there when that yeah, I was. I Swiss Beats straight up DM'd me one day, right, and right. me and him had a straight conversation throughout right. the entire day. I got a screenshot on my phone. Like that, that's, that's what I'm going to say. D he straight up DM'd me, and he just had a regular But this is the thing, though. So he said, me and. Come come on, he said, he said, he said, listen, yeah, man, he said, doing the humble shit right, right now. Right, right. He this said, me and. Who he likes said, your work? He said, me and Alicia. I'm like, who is Alicia? Who? He said, Alicia like. Alicia like somebody work at the corner store. Right, Yo, right, me and Alicia. Right. No, Miss Keys. Yes. He said he said we like your work. And we basically just had a long conversation. Like, it wasn't a consistent conversation, but it was throughout the day. Because right. by the time I met up with Bill, it was like nighttime. Mm -hmm. And he DM'd me during the day. Right. So we were, we were literally texting throughout, well, DMing each other throughout the entire day. So, I mean, there are other celebrities that, that DM me, and, and, but, you know, but Swiss Beast is the one that stuck out with me the most. Swiss is cool, man. He, he definitely went back to school and learned the whole. Like I feel I, like I Swiss is about Swiss. Yeah, he went. To, I think he went to Harvard and took some business right, right, classes. Business class. He goes back and speaks right, right. and everything. I, I really That's appreciate. A cool guy. Yeah, That's a cool guy. I really appreciate Swiss, man. I hope. Uh, yeah, man. I hope y'all, you and Swiss, work together in the future. But like, as far as um, like influences, like who influences you the most, if there's any? I believe you're asking that. And the nigga just said. No, he said. I said, what influenced you? I don't so think who? I asked who? Oh, who? Who influenced okay, that? That's a different question. Right. That's a good question too. Damn, who influenced? Like who? I know you were I, like camera. Besides Rock myself. <laughs> besides Tremaine Johnson. Who, who influences, influences me? Right. Damn. No, no, I'm, a, I'm a stylish nigga. My style is called. Call. Just, just show up. Okay. <laughs> just be fresh. Just be clean. <laughs> Take a shower, nigga. If you really want to get into it, this guy took about <laughs> 30 minutes earlier before right. this podcast right. to throw that hat and that jacket on. Yes. We ain't yes. going to talk about that. We ain't going to talk about how when the cameras came out, he got real Devo. Yeah, he got real Devo. Episode 11. I feel it. He, yeah, Devo. Man, I, I, listen, listen. I, I feel me, me wearing this jacket and this hat is out of character. I'm in my crib. Y'all look looking at me recording this in my drawers. Hey, bro, I, mean, I don't know how comfortable we would be, but you would be comfortable because it's your crib. But I believe it. So, so, again, we're here. Pause with that. Uh, Another right. thing. Okay, all right. TOBH moment. It's time to be home with these motherfuckers. I just show up. 
Niggas is putting all this money in the fashion. Top. This oh, and that. Please this finish. Please finish. Please finish, though. Niggas are standing in line for sneakers. Niggas are spending 300 on sneakers. Nigga, I'll show up my socks. We gonna fuck the same bitch anyway. <laughs> That's true. That you hear me? True. Nah, that's, that's, that's that absolutely true. true. But I respect the arts, though. Go ahead. That's true. That's true. I'm, I'm all for fashion. Gonna, I was going to bring it back to say, like, just show up, you know what I mean? But now you you wanted to rail on my man AI for just showing up to everything. But, listen, you know what I mean? That's cool. No, that's cool. We, we, listen, I'm tired of all of you. That's cool. That's cool. So, Phil, my point is, <laughs> my fashion is, nigga, show up. Okay. Fashion is my personality. As I sip this glass, I just refill. Continue. Oh, all right. Can I? Can I continue? You have my permission. There we go. All right, cool. So, again, we sitting here with Mr. Human Alien. So, what is your favorite piece that you have designed? Like, what is the fa of all the clothing that you have produced and designed? What is That's your easy? I have this leather jacket that I made. Ooh. <laughs> that joint Ooh. is. Here's the funny thing about it. I know that joint plays. I just think that leather jacket. I can't even take credit for it. I just designed it. There's this guy in Ooh, South. South Korea. Named Cody Duckett. <laughs> Shout out to Cody though. Cause Cody flamed it too though. He did. Nigga, I, listen, I done seen some niggas in his coat and I'm like, ooh. Yeah. Cody did flame that Cody jacket. Flamed. Cause like I just said, I like to just show up. But Cody flamed it. Cody, the pics, you Cody flamed showed it. up. I never seen you wear it, but in the pics you flamed it. It's only certain niggas who could flame this jacket. I wore, I wore like a couple. I wore, actually I, think, I wore it a lot. Actually. I think Hound wore it to the future. Hound wore it? That jacket is that crazy. The, the jacket is like crazy. The, the jacket is crazy. But I, like I said, I can't really take much credit for that one because I designed it. But the guy in North Korea who actually made it, he I, all the credit goes to him. And if you guys don't know, uh, North Korea, excuse me, sorry, South Korea. I was about to say. <laughs> South Korea actually takes um, leather seriously. So if you're looking for leather, Italy and in South Korea, places you might want to check out. You're dropping gems now. Gems, major, major I'm just letting you know. Talk, I'm just letting you know. Talk. It's a good place for leather. Cloth but he, he, the, the, that leather was butter soft. That suede was crazy. <laughs> I felt he, it. I mean, I gave him the, the measurements, and I gave, and I gave him the design. He took it to another level. I can't even take credit for that. Right. That the beauty was in the the, the craftsmanship. That, that, that jacket was fire. I ain't gonna lie. It's, all right, so let me. Let me it's my personal favorite. Maybe. That's, that's my favorite. I think the first time I seen it, I think we all met up. I can't name exactly the bar or the location, but I remember you had it on the first time I seen it. That jumped tough. And we was yeah. It's crazy. So, that so, so, so this is, is my question. What is your response to people who be like, oh, he's not Louis. He not this. He not that. But you had these high price points. Like, how do you come to your price points? They gotta go to Hot Topic. They gotta go to Zara because I'm putting works. Okay. All right. So let me explain how it works. Please do. For the, so, for so for the people, people don't know that, so you might have a four hundred dollar heel. Mm -hmm. You you might have. I think that even this little jacket we speak about was how much? That jacket. I try to put it low for like five fifty. That jacket could be like twelve hundred. Yeah, that's a, right. That's a low price point for yeah, five fifty. Yeah. So for somebody who says you're not Gucci, you're not Louis, you're not just like that. How do you reach this 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 price point? Okay. So so the first thing is people don't know what they're buying. Okay. As as manufacturers and retailers, we play we, we play your game as a customer, right? Because we know that you don't know, uh -huh. right? So for example, like I said, shout out to my boy Cody. We make glasses, right? Titanium, which is actually the best material for glasses, um, is light. Yeah. But people will think because the, glass, the glasses are light, that it's not worth the money, yeah. right? So we have to, so a lot of times, a lot of sunglass places have to put in weights or use an alternate alternative material just to make it heavy to make to appeal to you. Okay, so you true. think it's better, okay. but it's not the case. When it comes to pricing, there's four prices, right? Okay. There's how much the manufacturer uh, pays to make it, how much it costs them. Yeah. How much you pay the manufacturer. Yeah. Um, your uh, your uh, your wholesale cost, right. and then your retail price. Right. Okay. If someone's wondering why. My tees are 95. I don't know how much they are. 95 or whatever it is. I don't know how much they are. <laughs> All right, well, when it's my one why the tee is 95, think about this. I'm not Zara. I can't produce 10,000, 100,000 tees, right. right? Obviously, the price per tee goes down with the more you order. Absolutely. I only can order a few. I'm not, I'm not a big company. Right. I have the ability, because of my relationships that I've built, I have the ability to order one tee at a time. I can order one tee at a time. I can order 20, I can order 10, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But ordering low low price for the premium cotton tea with that many, with, with that, with all those prints on it, uh -huh. it's like $50 a tea. Right, right, right. I, I can get it down to like 30, yeah. right. right? 
Let's have the numbers now here, people. So, so, th so think exclusive. about this. Yeah, right? so let's yeah. just say the tea costs forty dollars to make. Okay. Cool, cool, right? Then I gotta sit here. And I gotta. Uh, I gotta put in the fact of the price of me actually spending the time on bleaching it, yeah. right? So, so that's, your, time that's your personal signature. Yeah, so I, you yeah. I, bleach I hand bleach everything. Okay, it's not a machine. Everybody no. doesn't have the same bleach. Exactly. Right. You personally signature it. I you personally sign personally it with your everyone. own bleach. Right. With your own Clorox. Right. 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 Okay. Now let's also think about all that artwork. I don't have a designer. I don't have a, a illustrator. I illustrated myself. Right. I spent hours on this artwork that you're getting. Right. Okay. right? So factor how much money you think you want to get spent on hour per hour for the artwork that you did. Yeah. So you factor. Work, yeah. So you factor that in, right? So let's just say that that's just says be modest and say that ends up being fifty five dollars a tee. Mm -hmm. How much did I pay for it, right? Mm -hmm. How much, right? So then you say, well, why don't you just make twenty dollars on the tee or thirty dollars on the tee? Okay, cool. Let's say I do, right? Mm -hmm. Now the tee is like seventy, maybe eighty dollars, right? Yeah, right? But you right. think about your 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 wholesale costs. The wholesaler, if I want to sell it to a store, they have to make money as well. Right. So that means I have to put a price so that once I pay the manufacturer, I have to get I have to have a a, a good markup so that Whoever, whoever store buys it in bulk, I can sell it to them for a good price and then they can in return make a good price. Right. So when you think about it, $95 for that tee. It's a bargain. It's actually, I wanted to make those tees like, you know, won something, but I knew that it was a bit too high. Right. But that's how much, that's that's literally how it should be priced. Anybody in, in, in the industry would tell you that's how it should be priced. Right. I couldn't afford to make it. Like, what, what price would people think? What, $50? I would literally be paying you. If you if you want if you wanted the t-shirt to be fifty dollars, you'd have to give me fifty dollars. I have to send you a t plus like five more dollars. My bad if I spit on you. Yeah, you did. It's laying right here. My bad. My bad. I'd have to I'd have to give it's you money back. That's the passion. That's, that's right, passion. man. I'm this upset. This is this is lazy nigga. I feel it. Lazy, lazy nigga that said, listen, I'm working. But see, For real. You can tell when he starts when talking you, about when something you make he cares me work, about. When you make him work, I'm upset because you can't. I can't give it to you fifty dollars. No, no, listen. If you charge $40, you know, there's no more passion. I'm working now. Yeah, I'm working now, and I'm paying you as well. I'm sending you a tee plus $10. Right. You're paying them now. They, they I am. Wear your shit. I am. I'm paying so you to wear my pants. I got you. I'm with you. It's man. impossible. And until, until I start doing large volume of thousands and thousands right. of tees, you know, then we can talk about something. But and, I can't. And you get there and you get there. I mean, it's all a process and everything. And, and eventually human aliens will get there. But right now, that's your price point. That's just how it is. It. You got to live with it. I hey, mean, man. but they've been, here's the thing. I ain't hurting. My pockets are not hurting because they've been selling. Yeah. So I ain't worried about that. And that's why we decided to do this <laughs> to do this giveaway. I read your comments, like like you all know. Anybody who follows him, I'm one of the photographers. So a part of my job is to, to look at the comments, see who you know, see who the market is. Mm -hmm. And people want these teas. So I kinda feel like I'm doing the charity. I feel like I'm doing these people the right by giving away free for free. We're talking about free people. Free. Free ninety nine. Yeah, everybody likes something free. Just look at the paper shipping. <laughs> You ain't got to pay for nothing. Nothing. Right, right, right. It's coming to your doorstep. And you have a choice. So we're giving away three t-shirts, and you'll have a choice. Right. Between that's Death a, Anime a, 1, 2, or 3. You ain't getting four because four costs like 180. That patch is like $98 on its own. Yeah, talk and about five, it. And five is just too much work. So y'all get to choose. <laughs> talk about it. Four to patch you, too much. You get what you pay for. Hey, you, get, hey, you get Death Anime which 1, is, which is nothing. 2, so you're gonna or get 3. What we give you. That's right. So you should be happy. So, Even if we sent you the wrong side, you should be happy. No, 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 no. Don't, 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 don't get it twisted. Don't do that. Don't so, get it twisted. Basically, what you got to do is, all right, you need to follow our the podcast page, all right? Yep, yeah. Which is TARS. T-A-R-S. Yes, indeed. Podcast, all right? All right, all right. So basically, to get these, the lucky three people, you need to follow the podcast. Follow the pages. Damn, I'm fucking up, man. I've, I've been drinking too drink. much. It's too, way too much, way too I, much I, liquor. I, 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 I don't refill. Follow, follow the Instagram page. Which the is handle Tars, is Tars Podcast. T E R S P O D A R S. T A R S. T E R S. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, if you want three free, you're not getting three by yourself. Yeah, you're not getting three by yourself. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you want some free. Human Aliens merchandise. We're giving out three T-shirts. All you gotta do is follow the I'm Instagram feel bad. page. Even if you, giving out this much, it's too much heat for free. But if I you want, like we're devaluing the Human Alien product. I mean, but that's my man. So that's what we're gonna do. It's a, it's we're giving out three of them. We're giving out three. Follow the Instagram page, which is T A R S Podcast. All right. All right. Now this all is what right. you gotta do. Follow the page. All right. Yeah. Like a picture. Yeah. The latest picture. Mm -hmm. All right, and answer. This is the trivia question. All right, 
In this podcast, we spoke about entrepreneurship in the first segment. Absolutely. Now, who did Human Aliens... What was Human Aliens' teacher's name? All right. Of his first entrepreneur experience. All right. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Because I don't remember. Because I said that earlier. He did. All right. So, 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 so listen. What about, what about spelling errors? They can spell it. I mean, as long as they get it close, right? I, I don't no. know. I don't know. It's like Jeopardy, bro. You know what? He, he, he probably said it because he don't remember how to spell it. Right. I don't remember how to spell okay, it. Okay. So, as, as long as you're in the ballpark. So, listen. To win. So, so three lucky people. All right. To follow the page. Like the pics. Matter of fact, all the pics. This is a fresh page. Oh, shit. Like all the pics on the page. All of them. All right. Now, answer the trivia question in the DM. Direct message me. Don't put it in the comments. Don't do it in the comments. Because then you, you basically you, you gotta secure the bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you gotta, gotta secure the bag. This contest is about securing the bag. Secure your human aliens merch. Here's how you do it. You go on to our Instagram page, which is Tars Podcast, which mm-hmm. is the acronym for. This ain't rocket science, people. Absolutely. And tell us which teacher, Human Aliens, had his first entrepreneurship experience with. You will receive. No, not you will. You may. You may receive. You may receive. You may receive. Now, is it random or are y'all picking the first people who got the right answer? Nah, no, we're going to pick three random people. I mean, okay. three random people. Yeah, I think that's the only fair reason because it's a podcast. Okay. I mean, it's a week long. So you might hear when you hear it. So three random yeah. people. Three yeah. random people. So, I mean, it's follow the page, like, like all the pictures. And may, most importantly, DM us. And you may receive a T-shirt. All right, so cool. So that's a good way for them. When y'all gonna release the winners? The how they going there? So we're gonna release them. You guys have too many questions. Right. Right. So next episode, we're gonna release the winners. So if you get a shirt, you know. But before, <laughs> but but before next episode, I'll reach out to them personally, let them know if they won, okay, and get their size, and everything. We'll go take it from there. I had one more question though before we. Nigga, I had two more. It's not too often. It's not too often we get Mr. Human Aliens in the booth. So I want to ask this question. What are some things that you're currently feeling in the fashion fashion industry? Damn. That I'm currently feeling? Currently feeling. Jesus. God. Let me need to check that Wild Cruel page. This is what? Yeah, you might got it. At Wild Cruel. Okay. At Wild Cruel. Damn. What am I currently feeling? that page feeling? Follow me. I didn't even know that was you until you said it. I so. Damn. That's an excellent question. Say it again. What's the question? What are some things that you are currently feeling in the fashion industry? Man. Ah, ah. Okay. I like how, um, like a lot of uh, mesh and see-through fabrics are coming back. Oh, okay. I, I, I don't like how... I think that when it comes to women's clothes, it should be a, it should be a sense of sexiness in it. Okay. There was this tomboyish phase that, that was going where I didn't feel too much. I like the fact that a lot of femininity. I hope that's the right word. Femininity. I hope so. I hope that's the right word. No, we're saying I don't know. I didn't teach as much. Might be. I don't know. But roll with it. Femininity. <laughs> they can teach you much. <laughs> Listen. The the femaleness. The, the, okay. Um, I like how there's a lot of more femaleness going on. There you go. Okay. 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 And uh, <laughs> and fashion. Um, I feel though like there all should be a hint. Even if there's a tomboy swag, I feel, whoa, came by just said that. Even if you're doing some tomboy, like a tomboy look, I always feel like it should be a, a dash a, have, like, a yeah. sexiness somewhere. Right, like if you got a cleavage, some legs, can something. I get some stomach? Can something. I get a hip? Right, can I get some hip? And I like that. I like how, how that's coming back. Okay, all right, all right. So, what are some things that you're not feeling on the fashion industry right now? I'm, I'm not feeling. I'm not. I'm, I thought they were gonna be done. If they're still making these body con dresses. Like when like these designs, like body suits? No, like these dresses that just just form fitting dresses. There's oh, no okay, structure. You, it's what? like you keep putting out these and then like these nude colors, these like autumn. Like I'm tired of those nudes, those army greens, those brown. And you're not. That's not fashionable. Just because you threw on, just because you throw on some tight nude body con dress, that's not fashionable. Anybody can do that. And then throw some nude heels. What is that? Who do you blame that on? Because like I, 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 like, do you put the blame on, on to me when I think? Blame it's on strict, Instagram. Strictly Instagram. Yeah, they saw some chick with, with a fat ass and some big titties who had this tight body con dress on, and they wanted to imitate it. It's not. You look good. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. She I'm came down the street. I'm gonna give you a light. In some in some uh, camo green uh, 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 tights right. and a crop top, you're gonna look good. I got you. But don't say don't start to say you're fashionable. It's a different. You look good. I'm gonna look, good, right. I'm a look good twice. Fashionable. But you ain't fashionable. That's what I've been living by. Yeah, you, you I look good. You, you, but you ain't I'm fashionable. Not fashionable. Not at all. No, I want to be. Just because I broke my neck when you walked by, <laughs> don't mean you're <laughs> fashionable. Just <laughs> mean you got fat ass. Just mean you got some tights on and fat ass. That's it, baby. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, you That's what's for any broken neck, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking because you got a fat ass, not because you might right. be fashionable. Now that it is, there it is, there it is with 
human aliens himself. I want to thank him for dropping by to this ain't rocket science podcast sponsored by Tired of Being Humble. That's right, that's right. We about to we about to toss it to uh, my man Uzi. Hello, Uzi. Well, let me ask you this question. So, so how do your parents feel about you being lazy? You not going? To, you you burning your degree? How, how does your mom feel? My, well, I told Matter of fact, no, no. How does your father feel about his son making high heels, making dresses? <laughs> Your father, who is a cool Let's ass see. nigga, man. By, by the way, by the way, your father is one cool ass man. But, but it's been, it's been said. He's probably, yeah, I'm probably. But how does he feel about you? like, like you? For example, I have a son. Uh huh. I'm not sure how I respond if my son popped up, sketches his high heels and dresses. Mm-hmm. So how did you do that? How did you do that? You know, look, look, all right, let me tell you this. First of all, if you go on my Instagram page, you see I'm surrounded by women. Oh, he's beautiful women. Uh, what you prince? Nigga? So, like my, new prince? so if my father saw that, what well, she has. Would he respect it? Of course. <laughs> let, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You, you're talking. You're talking about ball players and athletes and rappers being around a bunch of girls. Imagine being a male fashion designer. Okay. I see women every day. I don't want to. I don't want to imagine. Of a high caliber. I've worked on their set. I, yeah, you know, you've been. You are the photographer. So, I mean, one of the key something I do want I do want to share though is that you know I went to University City High School, which was like a uh, which is the equivalent to like you seen a movie like The Substitute and, and you know what I mean I, yeah like you know what I mean like Cooley High. I went to, I went to uh, my father graduated from there. From uni? Yes. For real? Yeah, yeah. I went to a terrible school. Like oh. people like didn't come to school. Like people died. Yeah, like there's mine. Like no, I'm serious. No, people didn't die. People got killed. <laughs> Whatever. Well, I went to a dangerous school. So you would think that. You see some young guy drawing shoes and drawing dresses like, oh, let's get him. But that's not the case. The case is, if you always be yourself and you be you, right, people right. will respect that. Yeah, if you good. make it, if, if you're comfortable with it and you don't seem like you're shy, I wasn't hiding it. It was on my desk. You can come see it. You're tired and, of being humble with your design. Exactly. When the, when, the, when, the, when the guys would see the girls come up to me, oh, wow, that's crazy, they wanted to be like that too. Yeah, you know what I mean? So uh, like, I, I encourage anybody out there who wants to be, you know, you think that it's, it's maybe it's not the most masculine job in the world. Okay, when you're around all these women, you think twice. And I just, I just, I mean, you should just be yourself. Because if you, you never own own who you are. Right. Be yourself because so that's really what got me here. So your pop said, look, my son got ten girls around. Him. He's good. Basically, my my dad never cared. My dad was never, my dad was a very liberal person. And he didn't really care. He, he didn't care. How does mom feel about this? Oh, is she hitting you over the watch out for the gold diggers? Watch, watch out for the no. Some actually, watch, some actually, watch out for these hoes out here. They just what trying to get free dresses. Oh, they want is a shoe. All oh, they want is a shoe, baby. Okay, that's the opposite. I'm telling my mom said. <laughs> my mom said. My mom is 63 years old. She said, Why is she 63? Yeah, she look good for that. Dude. Thank you, thank you. I've seen the throwback picture in a minute. Hey, hey. Listen, listen, hey. listen. <laughs> <laughs> On another note. <laughs> My mom said, she's like, why you make your heels so high? I can't wear them. So I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm like, mom, it's safe for your age bracket. She uh, said to me, she was like, I'm going to I'm gonna start a petition that people can't sell shoes that high. Ooh. I was like, you hating? What you hating on me for? The ultimate hate. <laughs> Yo, Republican mom. My, my <laughs> black Republican mom hated on the kid. Yo. But my, my mom definitely supports it, though. That's, that's what's up. That's what's up. So... <laughs> As, you know, I mean, as we close out this interview with uh, Mr. Human Aliens, I just want you to read one thing, man. I want you to, I just pulled it up. I want you to read the definition of humble, please. All right. This first one says, not proud. Not thinking of yourself as better than other people. Jeez. Then go to the second one. Second one says, given or said in a way that shows you do not think you are better than other people. So let me ask you this. Are you trying to be humble, man? I am. I'm very tired of being humble. That's what it comes down to, people. That's all that needs to be said. Baby. Tired of being humble, man. This ain't rocket science. <laughs> Wake up. This ain't rocket science, people. Episode nope. 11. Episode 11. Episode 11. We got my man, Human Aliens, in the building. Human. The alien himself. Me? Live in person. So this is what we're gonna do. My man here, we're gonna talk about entrepreneurship today. Alright? Mm-hmm. Also, keep listening. We're gonna give away three t-shirts. 
All right, three t-shirts of what? Three t-shirts, three human alien t-shirts. Ooh. All right, death anime, one, two, or three. It'll be your choice. All right. All right, right, right. So what them, what them teams retailing for? Uh, damn, what is it, 90, 98, 95? I don't give, know. We give them away? That's in the budget? Give yeah, away three of them. Yeah. And, I gotta, and I gotta hand bleach them. So. I don't know if people realize that though. Right. The time that it takes to make these t-shirts. Take some time. Because though. people get at you in your comments all the time about, oh, yeah, you know, people complaining about the price and all that good stuff. This ain't Zara or H&M. My man said it's hand- a hot topic. That's almost as good as an autograph. My man said he's hand bleaching it. Hand, hand bleaching. <laughs> What's up with bleach? I'm just joking. 7-Eleven. <laughs> they ain't getting that chloride. <laughs> Oh yeah, all right. So yeah, we gonna talk. We gonna we gonna, we gonna have some cloth talk. All right, cloth. as my man DJ Khaled was talking. So we gonna talk entrepreneurship. We gonna holla at my man Phil about you know his journey because you know he he's, he's straight from the oils with it. Right. He's not working for anybody. He's working for himself. That's what entrepreneurship is. Man. The definition of entrepreneur. Exactly. Exactly. Also, I want to hear about y'all Mother's Day. All right. And we gotta touch on the boy, the chef. Curry we got it. We got it. We got to touch on that. So we're gonna definitely talk about the big playoffs also. All right. All right, all right. But all right. So 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 back to entrepreneurship. Right. Which is something I've been thinking about a lot. But it all started with my boy B Roy. He brought up a good ass question. In right. The right. Chat. B Roy brought up a great question. A lot of our podcasts, a lot of the content from the podcast, like I always say, comes from our group chat, which is good. Which, which is good. Like I said, so. B. Roy came up with the thing. He was he, he he asked a sincere question. He was basically saying, "Is it better to have a steady job, right, yeah. or to be out every day hunting? Like, would you?" So he was basically asking us, "Would you rather be? Would you rather have a steady job, you know, which could be boring? Y'all, y'all know the boy. Get this man a Pepsi. Y'all know you know he don't drink. I wish. I wish I had a Pepsi. My <laughs> boy B. G. tried to slip him, but no. So he was asking, "What do you think is better, or what's you better? Would you rather have a steady job?" And also have a which creates a steady paycheck. Right, right. Or would you rather be basically have to eat what you kill out every day doing your thing, making this money? So how, how do y'all feel about that? Like I'm on, and I, we spoke on this a couple times. I'm on the on the fence. I think you should like you should definitely secure the bag. Since we drop in talent terms, you gotta secure the bag. We always talk about securing the bag. So securing the bag to me is getting that steady paycheck, but at the same time, you can still work towards what you want to do. So like with me, I, I have a steady job. It's not nine to five, but I mean it's three to eleven, three to twelve, whatever. So I have that in the back pocket. That's for my benefits, just in case I break a leg or some shit. You know what I mean, something go wrong, I can go to the doctors get che- get checked out. But right, right, at the right. same time, I'm still working for some other, you know, working towards other things. Uh, you know other businesses, so I think that's that's the way to go. But some people, you know what I mean, some some people won't go that route. Some people can't go that route. So I mean, what do you what do you think? What do you think? Is the, matter of fact, Phil, what, um, what, it was a different two different questions. You said, what do you think is the best, or do you what do you think is the best for you? That's two different questions. True. Because <clears throat> the difference between being wealthy and difference between being rich. That's the, that's the main difference. Okay. okay. Work for yourself, you become wealthy. You get that paycheck, you can become rich. But it's a big difference. I mean, it's whatever right, so, you want to take. So basically, what do you think is better? Period. So what do you think is better? Period. You rather? Well, we- wealth is always better. I mean, you having your own job. When you have your own job, you create your money, right? And like literally, you're making your own money. Yeah. Right. When you when you have a job, when you when you're not an entrepreneur, someone writes a check. But the problem with that is someone cannot give you that check. Like someone's in charge of your money, or you can get fired. So I think if you want to talk about securing the bag, secure is about literally making your own money. No one can fire me. No one can fire me. I have, I have no, no one can fire me. No one can stop me from making money. Like when you have your own talent, right? You make you make your money. Right, right, right. No one can stop me from making my money. I, you can break both my arms. You can cut my arms off. I still can make money. So I think, could you just, could you design the shirt I have on right now with no arms? Oh, I, I got a mouth. I can speak it to you. Someone else can do it. Okay. No, no. I, I definitely, I definitely feel feel what you're saying because, like, when you're your own boss, nobody can stop you. Nobody can fire you. Most definitely. But in a more realistic way, like I kind of feel like I agree with Bill. Like for most people, and I hate to say most people hate to generalize, but I kind of believe a lot of people just only stick to okay, I'm gonna work, I'm gonna work, I'm gonna work, 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 work. Forty years go by, what had, what, what do you have? You feel me? So at this point, especially in our lives and probably the demographic that we t- target on this podcast, I think it's good to have a steady job. But on the back end, you should be working for something to have to own something on your own. Right? You feel me? Use the money you make at your steady job, that steady paycheck. But to build something on your own, because like you said, a job can only take you so far. Right. You feel me? Now your talent and whatever you see 
can take you a lot further. Right. So, you know, me and BG, we don't, we don't agree a lot in this podcast, but I definitely feel you on that point, which is, you know. Got to secure the bag, man. It's, and it's like, you can, you got many hustles. I mean, everybody has different hustles and everything. You, you are a man. And the reason why I know it's your man, real shit, because <laughs> he had crazy hustles back in college. The funny thing about it, I don't think I said it, we all went to the same school. So oh, we yeah. all know the same story. No, no, no. We yeah. repping the state, the Hornets. Human you know aliens. Yeah. Human yeah. aliens, my boy Phil, definitely. <laughs> and that's back when, I don't know where to go back this far. But I remember when I heard my man Phil, human aliens, that's back. I'm like, what the hell? That's when you just had all the crazy ass drawings. I was coming to your room getting a cut. I was right. like, what's that was up, like what's up, seven. Hold on, you was cut, you was cutting him? No, hell no. Yeah, oh, wow. I, I was a barber. This nigga this was never. <laughs> <laughs> never was this nigga. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to the boy Party Boy. Oh party, man, party. Party, 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 party was lacing niggas in the ville. Party Boy was definitely lacing me in the ville. But it's, it's, it's just good to see, you know, his shit not go from idea, but see his shit go from sketches to actually seeing you wear it. Was writing on his fucking door. Right, right. And back then I couldn't wrap my head. Human right. aliens. I'm like, what the fuck is a human aliens? Well, right. I'm thinking about that. What, what is a human aliens? How did you come up with that name? I actually came out. Uh, shout out to well, not I don't really. Well, Mike, um, my boy Mike. The he said Pharaoh? he's from Harlem. He said his man back at home used to say, um, uh, uh, "Fuck humans, aliens rule." And one dad just took that. Ooh, one dad just took too. that. <laughs> but I mean, it has it has a meaning to it. I mean, the human aspect is like where you know you you are unique. Well, the, no, the human aspect is where you're like everyone else, mm-hmm. we're all humans. Right. But the alien aspect is where you as a as an individual, like where you're unique. So it has a meaning to it, but it came from fuck humans, aliens rule. No, I like that. I like that. That's definitely heat. And one thing about, uh, y'all always know, on this podcast, I refer to The Breakfast Club. <clears throat> and last week, I saw an interview with, uh, with Gary V. And he talked about, you can't really teach entrepreneurship. There's no way you can do it. I don't know. But to be an entrepreneur, there, also, there are like certain traits or certain things you did growing up where... It leads to being an entrepreneur. Like one one major thing he said is selling. Like somebody who can flip something. Yeah. So when you were growing up, even before you started this, were you always like selling something or making a profit, or were you always like basically supporting yourself? Or the the earliest I remember, like we was in like these mentally gifted like program, and we had to like you was riding a shirt bus, my man. Right. No, nah, that's nah. what it sounds like. <laughs> it does sound like that. Shirt bus. And listen, listen. <laughs> Hashtag shirt bus. Life. And listen, you believe whatever your parents tell you. It could have been for some slow, you know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, it, we had to do like we had to like make our own business. This is like the fourth grade. That's what's up too. We had to like make our own business. So like me, my man, like shout out to my boy like Najee back in the day, my boy Jarrell. We had to like make we had to like make like our own business and the, I was the richest person in the class because I, I invented the name for the dollar and then I like so in, the, in this class project, y'all had your own money, your own. Yeah, we, we actually like okay. we actually make stuff so and get money. So you literally was the richest it. guy in the class. No, I literally was because what happened was like as you, far as y'all, right. y'all money. So people would, like bake cookies and they had to like actually make money. Like that became okay. real currency. Oh, so we would like draw great. stuff and like what make money. This? this was well, we went to Powell and then the oh, the classes were at like uh, Drew. They took that down. Let me just say that's good for fourth grade because I haven't heard of nothing like that in school until I got to Dell State. Right. Remember people used to hang out in the MBA building? Oh my God! For their project, yeah. but continue. So you say so you saying earlier? Yeah. So so your first memories of hustling came in came in school. Yeah, we were the richest. We, we had like six. They were called Micromatics. I, I remember um, um, John Travis. He had made that. He won for the for the the logo. But I named the money and I did like I designed the dollar. Yeah. And I had like six Micromatics. It was like it was like it comes to like six hundred U.S. dollars. Whoa, whoa. I know. I'm de- like the next so person was so like. So who in the world would you say you were in your classroom? Were you Bill Gates? Man, I was right. Gates. Did you Pablo Escobar? <laughs> what? Gates? Was, was I? Pablo? Would you Pablo? Did you Definitely. do it all legally in class though, or were it, you? It was it was it was all legal. Uh, and I felt we undercharged too, because no, he's he still upset about that. He's upset about that. Twenty five years later, yeah, well, yeah, I, he I, had I, a price point right. I, I, ain't, I ain't feeling that. Miss Nichols was her name too. We're gonna get into that that's later about getting the price point right. So, so, so definitely, you would say that that's pretty much true. So, you, you, you feel like you had the hustle spirit, like it's my man Jay Z. I, I, not really. No, I ain't gonna say that. No, I ain't gonna say that. I was spoiled. I had every video game, every second gen. I ain't gonna say that. Right. I can't say I had that hustle mentality, but I did like the finer things. I knew the order had to find the thing. You gotta yeah, make money. Right. So I can't really say I had a hustler's mentality, but I did, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe you can say that, because I did like money. I did like making it. I will say one thing about Jermaine right here, Mr. Johnson, because at Dell State, he laced me with one of my <laughs> first PlayStations right here. Yeah, and, that's- <laughs> and the way he did, like, first of all, PlayStation was like 400 in college. I bought, matter of fact, I bought a flat screen TV at Circuit City and I was trying to play my old system on it. It looked terrible. And mm-hmm. I said, you know what? I need a new system. I went to Mr. Tremaine and he had the PlayStations on deck. I don't know how 
See that? But he had it. He had the jerseys on deck. Too. He had the jerseys on deck. Like he they was, about it was wild Fugazi, but he had the jerseys. Oh, they on was fake as shit, but it's cool. Like yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, well, first of all, y'all totally just sucking me. It wasn't a fake jersey. Was it a real jersey? Did you put it on your body and wear it? Uh, it, it was physically physical, a real physical, jersey. It was, weird. was it an authentic so, so, jersey? Listen, Dude, that's, don't tell me continue. That's the hustle though. Like my what? man. First of all, say whatever you gotta say. Say whatever you gotta say. Don't tell me it was a fake jersey. You put it on your body. Yeah. Had a name and number of the team. It was a jersey. Uh, so right. There's no such thing as a fake jersey. I feel okay. All I'm right, good. now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't like how y'all tried to suspect your boy, but no, listen. You he, made money though. I made money. That money was real. And that, that money was real. That's what it comes down to. So right. when I watch my man Gary V talk, and he said that you can't teach entrepreneurship. I think about it like them. Like I kind of feel like I, ha- I got the hustle spirit. Like nigga, nah, period. Like I agree. I, like the nigga who says it. You know, I agree. Without even knowing. But I want to say my earliest days, because I'm like you, like, to be honest, I pretty much had it all. Like, mom, dad, balling. a stepmom, balling, a stepmom and a stepdad, so I kind of had four parents. Oh, Listen, I'm calling everybody mom and dad, you feel me? So I pretty much had everything I needed. Right. You, you, you feel me? But I want to say my earliest memories was, I got to say, I, I want to say 10th grade. Like I had a big operation. I was almost like Frank Lucas before I even knew who Frank Lucas was. Frank Lucas, you had yeah, the blue, blue magic, blue magic in the shout, shout out to my man Black. You know he owned Lavish or whatever because he says on his on his podcast I don't mention my Delaware days enough. You went to school with Black? No, hell no. Uh, I went to school, I went to Mount Pleasant in Delaware over a few years. Uh, you feel okay. me? So so at, in this high school, I was hustling. Mm-hmm. All right, one of the biggest operations I had was I was selling cheat sheets. You feel me? But it was elaborate. Okay. We, we had a teacher named Miss Walker, tenth grade English. Mm. Somehow I found out that she pretty much uses the same test every year. Okay. Okay. So I'm not gonna commit no crimes. So I had somebody go in her desk. <laughs> Keep the hands off. You got Listen, hands off. Approach. I'm clean. I feel you. All right. I had somebody go in her desk, get these tests. All right. Also take the scantrons. All right. Now listen. I graduated high school in 2005, 2004, whatever. So we, I don't know if y'all, I don't even if they, if they even still use scantrons, all right? I don't know. So I had a few packs of scantrons, and I had the test basically for the whole semester. And what what I would do is, I would take the test, all right, use the book or textbook, and just basically fill the scantron out. Right. And I would sell the scantrons. Right. So I'm in the hallways. How much did you sell them? Hand to hand with. We talking undisclosed amount. No, no, no. no we talking twelve. So basically, every Friday we had like a something like a. It wasn't a spelling test. We too old for that. It was a vocabulary test. <laughs> yeah. How much vocab- did you sell these right. yeah, let, let, let me tell you. Okay. okay. So for the vocab test, okay, it was fifteen bucks for the scantron. So basically, Damn. every every Friday. Yo, wait, yo, time out. Time hold out, on. Time out. Fifteen dollars. Let, let me let me let me let me let me right, say. Right, right, okay. Right, so right, basically. So for that semester, 15 bucks a scan try. I'm in the hallway, hand to hand with it. It's like three days worth of lunch. But the plan, the plan was, the plan was, okay, when I sell you the scantron and you're taking your test, when Miss Walker's not looking, you take your scantron off the table, you swipe him, you throw the, the joint I did for you, you put it in. Boom. Okay. That, that was the plan. Right. So I wanted 15 for that. Then at the end of the semester, she would basically put all these scan trines, all the tests throughout the semester together, and I would charge 50 for the end of the semester test. Hand yeah. to hand. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hand to hand. Hold on, hold on, hold on. My question is That's a hell of a market. Wait, wait, wait. That's a hell so of you had all you so the answers are already on a scantron. So if if for okay, fifteen dollars joint. For my young people, every Friday the answers were already on a scantron for you. So is it, was it a hundred or you like gave him like a ninety five? It was a hundred? You got a perfect score? I'm not gonna lie. I was tired of being humble. I was giving everybody beans because this is my thing. Oh, you gotta get caught. Yeah, that's no, how you get no, caught. No, right, right, every right. time I check, I but would you, at least get you like like a five, ninety seven range. Or you gotta be modest and give me eighty seven. I'm you taking big. First of all, I'm charging you fifteen dollars. I'm giving you a hundred, my man. That's a good point. That's you feel me? She has to prove. Wait, but hold on. But when everybody, so how many did you sell? When everybody started getting a hundred, she got to be like, "Yo, what's going on?" Let me finish. Let me finish. So this is tenth grade English. All right. Okay. I'm not lacing my whole class, and we all getting beans. Okay, you got a first period. You got a second period. You got a third period. So throughout the whole Who day, at fifteen. Right. I, I had a hard time paying five for them chicken wings. And <laughs> I'm serious. You right. must have had the great cheese steak. I had good. Not in high school. No, not in high school. I <laughs> had, no, 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 no. So basically, I was lacing them. My man was, yeah. I, I was I was getting it done. Shout out to I don't know how the, kids was yeah. coming up with this money to pay you. For 50, real? 50 a day. Well, listen, this is my thing. You only basically, I'm not going to sit there and act like I was making a million dollars a week. But this was you in Delaware. Would, you would come to me when you needed it. You, I need to get my grades up. Right. You, you, you wouldn't buy it for me every single Friday. You, you understand what I'm saying? Oh, but you might, you might, you might fail one, fail one, then holla at your boy. I got you. Yeah, you feel me? 
but and, and that's basically uh, that's basically how we was rocking. I you see. Know, you feel me? That's crazy. But that all came to an end. How all things come to an end. Hey man, can't be right. in the game too long. Everybody got a hundred, and she got fishy. Yeah. No, no, that's not what happened. Actually, is she, just, is she still employed? At this actually, she died. I seen it on Facebook. That's how she died. <laughs> you killed her. Are you kidding me? But the crazy thing about it was, uh, somebody ended up snitching on me. I, I won't forget it. Oh shit! I was in, I was in math class. I want to say his name was Pullick. This is the principal who came in. And anybody with the mountain knows this finger he gives you. It's like the John, like oh, come here. John. Yeah, if you watch my video, like, he gives you the come here, John. He looks at me. I said, damn, he got your boy. I had two lockers and everything. So basically, somebody, what? somebody, I didn't hold on, stop up. Hold on, who hold on. are you? Oh yeah, my nigga. You had, you had a, two lockers. So hold on, you had your 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 issue locker. I had my issue locker, and then you had a side locker. I had a side. Where locker. You kept the work at. Well, I kept the work at. God, and they was on me. They was on me. I was impressed with their investigation work. But the funny part about it, when I mentioned when I when I fall back to saying about how I pretty much had everything I needed growing up. My dad was so embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nigga, I, I give you everything, and you still got. Yeah, I'm out here selling scam And I couldn't understand why I did it. I was just kind of. I just want to say that it was free money. And the best thing about it is, you y'all are cheating. Y'all are waiting, waiting, waiting to throw the new scam on the desk. By me taking my time filling it out, there was no point for me to even cheat because it's like studying. I guess. I guess so. You, you feel me? So you are. Yeah. So, I mean, there was no risk, but I, I definitely got in trouble. And it was right before basketball season started. And I thought they were going to actually, you know, suspend yeah. me, but we, we worked it out. Yeah, it worked out. Hey, that's what's up. It all worked out for you. But that's, but that's definitely just, you know, my earliest memories of me hustling. So I kind of I kind of feel like, you know, it's in my blood. And, and to mention the Dell State, like the Dell State game. Yeah, that was, hey, that was popping. You had everything I ever need. I ain't never been on the level of that. Well, in Dell State, I did have, a, um, I don't know, I did have a, the consignments job in my, in, my, in my room. I saw all the clothes. Your probably never cop nothing. There. No, well, yeah, well, it was too expensive. In, cl well, in class, I, I, in, cl in, in, uh, in school, in college, I had my, my own, I sold clothes out my room. I could have sworn, I guess niggas ain't cop. I ain't cop. Like I said, they were not supporting me. Hey, right, some friends. But see, like, that's the thing. Like, that's three different. Now, now me, I have nowhere on the level of you, Tremaine, or even you. But, like, in high school, I like music and shit. So I would sell mixtapes straight off, like, mixtapes. Whatever the hottest song was, I would make a track. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, a, yeah. a straight mixtape of, like, 15 tracks, and I would offer them for, like, two, four bucks, whatever yeah, the fuck. And it a is. reasonable amount. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a very reasonable amount. It wasn't no damn, like. Four dollars for set. 15 for right. the scan you, you get a pack of CDs for Kidding 10 me? bucks and you just all You could give the teacher 15 and she'll I'm, give you I'm a not, Listen, right. I'm not gonna even lie. I, I probably and I went to a white school too. too. I went like, I, I was probably could have gotten more. I probably could have got more. Maybe in Delaware, maybe. If 15 was a problem. Not in a city. I wouldn't know, know the price, but I mean, they showed love. And like I said, it wasn't like people was coming to me every Friday because you don't need 100 every Friday. But like, all right, so like that, because we got three separate stories of. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship mindset. Like, how does that mindset? Is that mindset taught? Like, I feel like when when we go to school, and I know because my grandparents have taught me. When I went to college, they would say, "Hey, you gonna get this? You gonna go to school? You gonna get good grades? You gonna get a job? And you gonna work towards? I don't know. This like something, but trash. Right, exactly. Trash. Mm -hmm. You gonna work towards bullshit? Mm -hmm. Right, right. So that's like, funny you mentioned that. How is like? How is that mindset taught? I know I they're not I teaching it in school. I really don't, cause like my dad said, I have everything you want. Why are you? At school, cheating yeah. and some of them. Right. I'm just kind of like. I think well, entrepreneurship come from the like, kind of comes from the lazy people who didn't want to work, but I they want this lazy though. Yo, you working? I'm, I'm you? one of the late, but I'm not working. I'm doing what I, I'm I do this anyway. Do. I, I do this anyway. Like, you, even if I wasn't making, I'm doing this anyway. I was doing it before, and I'm going to be doing it. So I think it comes from people who really just right. I think, don't want a job. So I, what did your like parents teach you? Like, did your parents teach you that? Like. What did what was your parent the values that your parents instilled on you? Were they like do what you want to do, or as as far as like how to get ahead in life? Was it hey Phil go to school and do this, do A and B, and you'll get C, or was it like or Tremaine? Was it like what were the the values? What did your parents teach you? Did they teach you about entrepreneurship? Like I'm gonna let Phil go first. No, my my parents never taught me taught me about entrepreneurship. I mean, my mom told me I didn't know I was gonna go to college. Like Delaware State accepted me like. Five days before I graduated. Let me just say this. Back then, then, they accepted everybody. Let me just say <laughs> that's what I, I was about to say. Back then, they were accepting everybody. I know. You Felons, did. they didn't give a damn. You Nowadays, did. you know the gates been raised. You clear fast. You, you clear. You clear that fast, baby. If you, you gonna, gonna pay, be. they gonna let you play. That's right. right. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I came because my, my my father went to Rutgers. My mom went to Villanova. So I came from a college, but it's it's just it's, to me, it's about zombies, really. Your parents went to college. Now you gotta go to college, damn right. So my mom just thought that the way to go was to go to college. So I only went to college because. That's just I thought how you're supposed to do it. I was never taught that. I just was 
I just was lazy and I ain't want a job. See, I don't like how you use that word lazy because oh, I man, was lazy. There's, there's no way. Okay, okay. But it's real shit. I, I, but the word lazy, like, it's, it's like got a bad but, connotation okay. to it. I'm, in in I'm the lazy. school, maybe for school you might be lazy, but there's no way you are where you are right now and you're lazy. I'm not, I'm, I, it's not work. I just hate the, okay, because it's your passion. <laughs> it's not work. Okay, because it's your passion. I understand, I understand. And that should be the goal. Like, you should be wanting to feel like you, the stuff that you do, like your work, quote unquote work, is right. not it's work it's because right, it's your, right. what you really want to do. Because it's your passion. Which brings me to this point. Your passion. What is your passion? Like, me, myself, I ask myself all the time. Because, like, I'm, I'm on the side of entrepreneurship. I work, but really, my my passion is to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Like, if you ask myself, what is my passion? I like to make money. Really, my passion truly is, to, at the core, at the basis, is doing whatever the fuck I feel like doing. That's just what I like to do. Right. Now, you don't like limits on yourself. You don't like, I mean. You call it lazy. I like doing what I want to do. I like to do whatever. And I when, mean, when you want to do it, right? It, right. So, and it comes down to. You might be successful. Yeah, you, you might be successful. Is that the key to being successful? Yes. Being to be lazy. lazy. I think it, I when think your mom like, you so lazy, get up. No, no he's lazy. about to be rich. <laughs> Let this nigga be lazy. Like, <laughs> well, see, the, the, crazy, the crazy thing about my life is like, so I can't just be 100% entrepreneur, nigga. I can't just do my own thing. Like there are, I do have real responsibilities. Like everybody knows we speak yeah, all right, the time. Right. You got I got a girl, I got kids. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I can't just be, like I, I really feel like if I didn't have any children, I would just be out here, right. all the way out here. And that's why I subscribe to what Bill said earlier. I'm gonna keep a real job, you feel me? But in my heart, I really feel like I should be an entrepreneur. And that's why on the back end, outside of my real job, I'm working on what I'm working on. You, you got a podcast, you're a photographer. By the way, I do, is, you are one of my photographers. You didn't tell people that. Right, I really don't promote my, my photography skills. Sure, but you're a man, though. Right. I mean, I, I do what I, I do what I can do. But I, I you know, that's, that's just what it is, man. But the great thing about Dell State, like you mentioned, Megan, I forgot I get even sold your PlayStation. Shout out to my man Walt. Walt was definitely the connect the plug, dog. You talking about entrepreneurship? That nigga like, saw he saw the opportunity and seized it, my nigga. Right, 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 right. At Dell State, like I had the I had the Wii's, mm -hmm. I had the fucking Playstations. At one point, I was grabbing the the True Religion jeans off Fifty Second and Market. I, I know. I know yeah. And when you put them on True Religion, it's like putting it in a pot and watching so, it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm calling these joints for $25. Would you know why there's so many niggas in Dallas State with true with trues on? Listen. Was you the plug? Listen. Been. Listen. Listen. I'm the not, musty smell. Because, listen. The musty smelling trues, that was you? Listen. All I'm going to say is I supply some of the freshest niggas y'all seen at Dell State. Damn. No but, names? Can, can you give no, up names? No, 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 can no, I get I, a name? I can give names. I'm, nev I'm never going to do that. But what I will say is that wasn't my intent. Right. My intent was to just. Put them on eBay and flip them. Mm -hmm. But when niggas see you walk into the post office with four or five boxes, they like, yo, like, what's good with you? Y'all yeah, niggas already know. I had a next toe, had a sidekick, whatever. So, but the answer to the original question is, I kind of feel like entrepreneurship is definitely the, it's, the way to go. It's like something that you, you can teach entrepreneurship, but I think it's really something that you gotta have deep down. And like, it's shocking to me because we were talking about it earlier. Like, Howard University is one of the universities that started off HBCU wise, ain't really college wise, teaching entrepreneurship. So not just learn this and learn that, and you'll get here. It's more like build this, build a business. What, what do you like to do? So build a business that way. And real shit, when I was watching Social Network years ago. Social Network. Yeah. Social Network, like, I used to watch that shit when I went to sleep in college. Like, that joint used to be on. Because I felt like, they, what, what school was that? was that? That wasn't here, that was Harvard. Right? That was Harvard. Right? So they went to Harvard and it seemed like their classes were all about entrepreneurship. So they had entrepreneurs coming in and speaking to you. We didn't have that, and not just we, but most colleges don't have that. Like, they don't have- Any school. And that memory, middle school, high school? Right. It just don't make sense. Like, I think we really need to, as a people, just switch how we think about stuff because it's almost like we're becoming robots and, yeah. and, and accustomed to this, like, assembly line education and get a job and work. But that's not how it is, man. You gotta buy, you gotta, you gotta, own your own stuff. You're like we gotta own stuff, man. That's we gotta we gotta listen. start businesses. That's where it is. That's how America thrived. That's how we here. That's how, that's how this country got built. It was built on our backs, off the black, off backs of black people for businesses. And I'm not I'm not afraid to admit it, man. Like <clears throat> like I said, if it wasn't for my children, I really wouldn't have no job. Now look at me right now. I've been fired. I'm not gonna say even say <laughs> lost three jobs. I've been fired from probably. 
One. I've been fired from three jobs in the last four years. <laughs> and I'm That's talking a about feat, dog. I'm, like, I'm yeah. talking about good jobs. You gotta try. You gotta try. To this, this, this is what I'm gonna say though. And I'm talking about good jobs. And the funny thing is, I don't think I did anything wrong. Of course not. Which leads me to believe, like, but if you look in the mirror, you gotta say, "Damn, you must be doing right. something wrong." Right. Nigga, I'm not gonna lie. I lost a job. What's today? Tuesday. Tuesday. Y'all gonna hear this on Wednesday. Hmm. I lost a job, nigga, last Friday. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Like, it wasn't my full time job. And I'm, That's good. That's and good. we always talk about securing the bag. Don't get me wrong. Gotta secure the bag. His bag is secure, ladies and gentlemen. Don't get me wrong. His bag is secure. My full time job. I'm making more than I ever made in my life. <laughs> Yes, you know I'm saying that's why when you hit me to do your pictures, I can't do it. <laughs> the bag is secured. Right. But when I say I had a meeting <laughs> last Friday, all right, I got into a little trouble at work. All right, this well, goes well, back. Well, can, can you go into de- can you go into detail? I'll go into detail. All right, so how did you? This comes back to passion. Okay. All right, I had a part-time job. Laziness. Right. You know what? I, I'm not gonna call it lazy. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna call it a decision I make when I went to work. Okay. Part, a business call decision. Laziness. Right, I had a business decision. Okay. I had a job. I worked pool. Which basically means they call me when they need me. Mm-hmm. Now, once upon a time when I was hired at this at, su- at said job, they were understaffed. They needed to be bad. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, for example, you said you work three to eleven, right? Yeah. So I would go to my regular job, get off four four thirty, and if they needed me, I I fall through. Mm-hmm. All right. So <laughs> I show up because I know they needed me. I didn't need them. Mm-hmm. Shift or three, I show up at five. <laughs> You, I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. Y'all are allowing me to come at five. Right. I have. Well, so, they didn't allow you because now they took your job from you. No, you don't lose your job. You know where it's at. They I took it from no, you. No, 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 no. No, I kept, I kept it a bean with them. I kept it a bean with them. I'll be there at five. I'll be there at five thirty. I'll be there at six. Then they kept it a bean with you. That's a, See, that's, that's the funniest that's, term. That, you know, I lost my job. No, no, no. no, no you got fired. Look, you know exactly where it's at. I'll be the first one. That, job is still there. We can go over there if you want. <laughs> but listen. So, so, so if I say I'll be there at five, I'll be there at five. Y'all let me come at five. Oh, they said it was but cool. The key part, yeah, this is when they understand. Let me do what I want. You feel me? So last Friday, I got into a little trouble. I'm thinking we got a meeting to, to straighten things out. They had their minds made up. They were done with my shit. You feel me? Tired of you walking that, in with, like you own the motherfucker. But that's my point. I don't own it, but I walk in like I do. <laughs> you, you, you understand what I'm saying? I hear you. Because at the end of the day, that's not my passion. Mm. I was there to steal the money. Mm-hmm. Talk about securing the bag. I was still in the bag. <laughs> Nigga, I'm in there working on everything except what I should have been working on. I'm working on, on podcast topics, topics. topics for the podcast. Nigga, I'm in there doing new shit. I'm on YouTube trying to learn shit. <laughs> you talk about securing a bag, nigga. That's why you got fired. They probably look at your Google history. This nigga trying to learn. Nigga trying to learn crochet. This nigga <laughs> and a, and a <laughs> on their Wi-Fi. Oh. And the fuck nigga they probably looked at the and Wi-Fi. The, listen. This nigga has ran up 20 gigs of Wi-Fi. Porn, huh? <laughs> nigga, no, I, 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 no, I ain't gonna lie. I watch porn. Too. I'm not gonna even lie on this podcast. Uh, I, watch, I watch porn. Here. Listen, I watch porn all day. I ain't got a problem. But listen, <laughs> my, my point is, I ain't got no business working for these people. If, if you lose three jobs in four years, you gotta, you gotta look at yourself. You, you didn't feel like working for them no more. Nigga, you ain't feel like I never I didn't felt like being hired by them in the first place. Lazy. It was an opportunity. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. So when they fired me, these niggas had a nerve to tell me. <laughs> Let me say this. They wanted me to resign. So we had this meeting. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I have a meeting with two supervisors. And I'm thinking, coming to this meeting, I got a chance to fight this. Right. Nigga, I dressed like I was fighting a body. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I dressed like Beanie Siegel when he was, <laughs> when Hov took care of him. I go on this joint suited and booted. It was pouring down raining, my nigga. I don't even believe in umbrellas. Right. I don't even think niggas should use umbrellas. Nah, why not? But when I'm suited and booted, nigga, I had an umbrella. I go into the, I go to the yeah, job. You had the hard bottoms on? What did I? <laughs> I go into the job, nigga, umbrella up. <laughs> we sit down, I cross my legs. I'm thinking, <laughs> nigga, I'm thinking we about to discuss something. There was so, no discussion. There was no discussion, nigga. The yeah, verdict was before done. I even... Yeah, they had their mind she, When she used the term, and she, white lady tried to slide it out. So I'm terminating you because... I said, oh, oh so I'm fired. <laughs> but why can't they just call you and do that? Hey, they make you come Because they got to bring you in. Man, man. I said, no, listen, y'all knew I was... Them. I said, yo, you, you knew I was fired on Monday. Because they left me a voicemail. They made it sound like somebody died at the job. Right, right. And it was my fault. Right. But anyway, man, at the end of the day, all I'm saying is... I'm not tripping because I don't belong anyway. I really feel like in my heart, I don't belong working for anybody. I feel like I have the tools. You might, man. Look, everything I have to be successful on my own. Like, my nigga, YouTube, the internet, like, we really have the tools to to get this money on our own. She's trying to tell me that the world is mine. I know that ain't true. 
And even though I want it all I'm young man and I got everything to lose I'm young man and I got everything to lose I'm young man and I got everything to lose I'm young man and I got everything to lose I'm young man and I got everything to lose She tried